now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. 737 on O'Connor and Company. Thanks for tuning in here as we get you going where you need to go. Riding shotgun with you, and we appreciate you letting us into your lives. At 805, Joe Concha is going to join us, give us some media analysis. Jen Psaki's a big old liar. We've known that, but she got caught red-handed in her book. And it's not getting nearly as much news as Christy Gnome's uh, travails with her book deal. And then at 835, oh, my gosh, uh, actor, producer, writer, comedian, and now social and political commentator, Rob Schneider, the Xerox guy, making copies. Julie Gunlock, Good morning. the jewelster, <laughs> the Julinator, Julie Bully Bam Bam. Good lord! Who uh, who else who else did that? Would I I was a young person in an office setting back in the early nineties, and of course I did that. Of I course. drove my coworkers <clears throat> crazy. Yes, and you still do. Okay. Moving on. 30 years later. And Rob Schneider invented that. See, not a lot of people can point to a cult- cultural touchstone like that. Rob Schneider will join us at 835, and I will refrain from doing that to him <clears throat> when he gets in here, because I, I bet he gets it a lot. Right. <laughs> Joining us right now, the Cridster, oh, Credomania, Adam Credorama, <laughs> from the Free Beacon, doing the reporting. Adam, thanks for joining God. us. He hung of up. course, it's my pleasure. I mean, Schneider's coming on. You got to do that. All right, listen, you've yeah, got some cool. um, couple of developments here. And by the way, if you are not following the Washington Free Beacon in general, literally award-winning investigative journalism that the rest of D.C. just ignores. They're not they're bored with it, apparently. Uh, you know, we're in the middle of a war in the Middle East right now. Who wants to actually find the facts? And Adam Credo's byline in particular, when it comes to Israel, the United States government, the U.N., Iran, Adam is a must read every day. And now suddenly the United Nations is recalculating the death toll. We hear this Gaza death toll repeated over and over and over again, Adam. And now suddenly the U.N. saying, "Ooh, maybe the numbers were a little different. Yeah, by about half uh, for women and children. Both of those numbers were revised uh, earlier in the month to revised by half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, guess who they're they're relying on? It's the Gaza Health Ministry, which is run right. by Hamas. So naturally, Hamas has been inflating and lying about these figures and. The but, U.N. and also, mind you, the Biden administration right. has been citing these figures. Well, that's the thing. Adam, Adam's reporting bears out that it's because the U.N. is already a joke of an institution. We know that. But even they have more credibility now on these numbers than the Biden administration because they continue to use Hamas's numbers. Yeah, that's exactly right. And interestingly, uh, on Friday, when the Biden administration State Department released its uh, report on Israeli arms sales, uh, the one where they accused Israel of war crimes, pretty much, uh, uh, where they accused them of targeting civilians with U.S. weapons. In that report, uh, I, I noticed a very interesting section where they say that the numbers of casualties come from the Gaza Hamas controlled health ministry and that they deem these numbers generally credible, generally credible. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Do do you think, Adam, there will be any questions about this except for Peter Ducey, maybe, but at the White House briefing today, do you think there there will be any curiosity on this from the mainstream media? I would certainly hope so. uh, But, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily surprised when People don't ask about it and, you know, people don't try to hold them accountable. Certainly, I've asked the State Department about it. Uh, I haven't gotten much of an answer yet, but uh, maybe they will get back. You know, Adam, your reporting is also, again, spot on. Adam Credo over at Washington Free Beacon. Um, We've had waivers, excuse me, we've had sanctions in place against countries in that area to prevent arms sales to them because they turn around in the hands of terrorists. Iran, of course, famously, but also Qatar and Lebanon. Uh, The Biden administration issued a waiver to those sanctions last week, allowing arms sales to those countries. And then that was right before they halted 
the shipment of arms to Israel, our friend and ally. That's a hell of a one-two punch. They're picking sides here. They're they're literally on the terrorist side. Yeah, look, I I, I think that this is is a very startling story for several reasons. Uh, one of the primary ones being that they're holding Israel to a standard that they're not applying to other countries. They're allowing arms sales. And by the way, these sanctions are on countries uh, for their boycotts of Israel. Because they uh, enact economic boycotts of Israel, we hold up arms sales to them. The Biden administration waives those sanctions so they can continue sending arms to these countries. And the ones that are included on there are Iraq. What's happening in Iraq? Iranian proxies are attacking U.S. forces, attacking Israel, attacking our allies. Qatar, Qatar hosts Hamas. They host their top leadership. Uh, They're one of the main financial hubs for Hamas. Lebanon, Hezbollah controlled. Hezbollah, of course, funded and directed by the Iranians. So again, like everything in the Middle East and with foreign policy, these are puzzle pieces. We have to look at the holistic picture here. So while they're holding Israel to a standard that certainly nobody could live up to, uh, let alone the U.S., right, if the U.S. was waging this war, they're waiving sanctions for countries that have direct ties to terrorism, direct ties to the Iranians, and that of course, uh, would be using arms that the U.S. would sell them for things we probably wouldn't want them to do. Yeah. Adam, I also wanted to ask you, they're not only withholding arms and and missiles and and ammunition, but it turns out that they're withholding intelligence um, on the whereabouts of Mm -hmm. Hamas leaders. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and if they've backed off of that? I mean, are our intelligence agencies still withholding informa- important information uh, from the Israelis? Yeah, it, it, it's actually uh, pretty craven because the reports that I've seen indicate that they're trying to leverage this yeah. for Israel, right? They don't, the Biden administration doesn't want the Israeli government to launch a full-scale incursion into Rafah, Rafah, a neighborhood in the Gaza Strip, one of Hamas's last remaining strongholds. Israel feels the need to go in to fully eradicate the terror group. Obviously, the Biden administration has been lobbying them not to. This is the reason that Biden has held up arms sales and threatened future arms sales uh, to the Israelis. So I, I, I think looking at this here, the the threat of, you know, intelligence is really uh, a piece of yeah. uh, the, the leverage that the Biden administration is trying to use again to stop Israel from fully eradicating Hamas. All for the sake of winning Michigan. Yeah. One district in Michigan, Rashida Tlaib's district, you know, she represents Palestine there in the United States Congress, apparently. Hamas. No president has stood stronger with Israel than Joe Biden. Really? That's Jake <laughs> Sullivan yesterday. Oh, by the way, uh, oh, n- not uncoincidentally, today is the six-year anniversary of President Trump moving the embassy mm. from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Adam, I remember everyone's hair on fire saying that that was going to uh, you know, unleash hell on the world. But uh, it seems like that was the right move to make. Yeah, well, what did it lead to? It led to um, actually newfound peace in the Middle East when they finally did the Abraham Accords yeah. that uh, did peace with the UAE and other countries in the region. Appeasement of the terrorists brings on more terrorism. Standing by your ally brings in more peace. That's just the lesson. Impossible not to learn it. Thanks, Adam. Great stuff Thanks, at Adam. the Free Beacon, always. Thanks for joining us. Always my pleasure. Thanks, guys. 745.